welcome to today's feature show all about overcoming barriers in STEM, so that's science, technology, engineering and math, and an opportunity to learn more about the wide range of opportunities in that field of work. My name is Parisha Mystery and I'm a second year aerospace engineer at the University of Sheffield. I'm going to be your host today and we'll be discussing some experiences from a range of guests um, and learning a bit more about some of the alternative fields to engineering. I attended Luton Sixth Form College between 2017 and 2019 before starting my journey at Sheffield. In the first half of today's show, we'll be meeting two of our fantastic guests, Lorraine, who is a medical student, and Halima, who is a pharmaceutical graduate, and I'm really looking forward to learning about some of their experiences. I'd like to welcome my two guests for the first half of the show. So I'll let them introduce themselves as well. Uh, Halima. Hi everyone, my name is Halima. I'm currently a pharmacist at the Luton and Dunstable Hospital and um, I studied pharmacy at the University of Birmingham. Lovely to meet you Halima and also introducing Lorraine. Hello everybody, um, my name is Lorraine. I'm a third year medical student at Aston University um, and I'm from Luton, like Halima. Lovely, so today we're kind of getting into some of the barriers that we've overcome, etc. cetera, um, as STEM students from Luton. And I think it'd be really nice to kind of hear a little bit about your journeys and some of the things that personally we've kind of had to go through and overcome to get to where we are today. Uh, Halima, do you have any kind of anecdotes and such that you could share with us? About again, that? anecdotes about your time uh, through your journey of education, getting to pharmacy and where you are today. Oh, yes. So um, during my time in secondary school, um, there was a lot of supply teachers. I was in an environment where it was quite difficult and let's say uncool to study. Um, there wasn't a lot of aspirations as well. It wasn't all bad, though, because I managed to secure some GCSEs earlier. And um, the school that I went to is quite reformed right now. And then I moved on to um, Luton Sixth Form College, which originally was a culture shock. Um, there was weekly tests I was in a classroom where people wanted to study um, people were engaging with sessions and that to be honest did motivate me to consider pharmacy as a career and also look into Russell Group Universities. Um, this is something that I didn't really know much about and to be fair I have to thank um, myself for securing a place in the STEM Careers Academy now, this was an extracurricular program that enabled me to be paired up with a mentor who was a doctor at the hospital. Now, he um, organized work experience for me and really supported me with university applications. Um, I then went on to study and graduate with a first class honors degree in a master's of pharmacy and that university really opened a lot of doors in undertaking placements and um, to be honest preparing for a hospital pharmacy career. That's great I think you know there's such a rich kind of history and journey that you've been on and Lareb I think it would be really nice to see how your journey compares I think pharmaceuticals and the pharmacy route there's similarities to what you study, but also big differences and kind of what's your journey and such to where you are now? Um, so for me, um, my journey started very similar to Halima and um, I also went to Barnfield South Academy. Uh, was, I think the name has changed now to the Stockwood Park Academy. Um, when I was there, I had mixed ex experiences. There were some really amazing teachers um, that I still remember and still resonate with me. Um, but other classes I have to say were challenging. I think it was difficult because like Halima was saying, people 
in the class didn't share the same aspiration or um it was maybe about like in year 10 where I finally got moved into a set where everybody was kind of um I say looking to achieve higher um and it just makes me think you know the di difference between being in a higher set and having that environment and then being in it like even just set two like just one set below it's a big difference um and I, I think I hope uh, it's kind of balanced through now and you know there's um there's more ways to make it more balanced so that um there's high achieving students in across all sets um but that was my experience at the time and then I went to Luton sixth form despite there being a sixth form at my high school I just wanted a new kind of fresh environment so I went to Luton sixth form and um I had it in my head what I wanted to do I wanted to do medicine but I had to like open my mind to the possibility of a different degree so um I actually thought you know I probably enjoy pharmacy a lot um the way I got to that conclusion was I went to a um, work experience placement and this was in first year of sixth form. I literally um, spammed L&D with, <laughs> with emails like, please, can I have work experience? Please, can I have work experience? And I know that's even more difficult now with the pandemic, but back then um, it was still quite challenging. Um, so I got the work experience and I met a really lovely pharmacist there and through through the experience of meeting her I really I felt like you know this is such a amazing career and her job role was much more than what I expected um I also saw how pharmacists work with the medical team and you know um but most I was mostly still set on medicine um and then um another kind of highlight is um I after my exams my A-level exams I actually was in the situation where I didn't have that much information about how to apply to medicine and I had kind of left it to the end although it was kind of a it was a bit of a, like I had to make a choice should I focus on my exams or should I start worrying about application and I thought okay you know what I need to focus on my exams 100% so um, I actually was like too late for the UK cap I had a month left to revise for it and I was like no I can't do this too much pressure and that was a one of the best decisions I made um and I took a gap year in that gap year I was working at sixth form um and it really built so many skills I'd say um that have enabled me to actually get my place at university um so that's just like how I got to medicine um, I did get go to an interview for pharmacy as well, which I really liked. Um, it was at UCL and um, it was a it was a good university. I did like London, but I loved Birmingham more. <laughs> um, so if I touch on a little bit on Birmingham, uh, why I picked it. So I kind of um, when I came for my interview, I really liked the atmosphere and I just knew that this was a place where it was a really good environment for me to learn um and it was very familiar it was there was aspects of Birmingham that were very familiar to Luton um and I felt comfortable even though I was away from home so that's one of the reasons why um I picked Birmingham and now I'm a third year here incredible um so many things in that that were really intriguing and as a student from Luton myself, I see lots of parallels in that, um, especially with the transition from high school to sixth form, etc. Maybe it's something about the North that attracts us to study up here. Yeah. Um, that's an interesting one. And it's really lovely of you to share those experiences. So thank you so much for that, Lorraine. I do want to ask um, Halima a question, um, more to do with the transition. And I think Lorraine, because you both went to the same school, it could be interesting to hear your take on this as well. Um, so Halima, how did the transition from Barnfield South to Luton Sixth Form help prepare you for later steps throughout your journey? So I think one of the biggest things was motivation. In Sixth Form, 
obviously I, I think I mentioned this before and Lareb did as well. Like, um, we were in an environment where um, it was actually it was so supportive to learn. And that transition from um, my our high school was essentially um, very useful and it definitely prepared us because it gave us a lot more opportunities as well um, to be more informed about future career choices um, what career path to go into different universities that are out there um, where to look for placements and bursaries and um, really as well networking as well and how important that is so I think, um, and also transitioning from a high school environment where you're just focusing on GCSEs to sixth form where it was more like a holistic view and you were looking into um, your um, career, but also, again, networking and um, just in general, like your whole future aspirations and what it is and even like um, job support, etc. So yeah, definitely the transition gave me a greater outlook on what there is out there and like what I can do. That's, again, something that, you know, it's an experience, I think, that's coming for me in the sense that and now at uni and it's something that will be coming in the future and you spoke of motivation and things but also the depths of information that you were able to source from being at such a new place in such a new environment and I think that's really um, insightful as to what's to come as well for people who may be at high school at the moment. I think it's also quite interesting kind of what aspects of information we've all been able to get from things like transitions and especially the very your decision to move from a school that already has a sixth form to Luton sixth form and was there any information kind of to do with universities and the things that you were able to receive from those universities that you were able to find out from taking a gap year and from taking that time to do additional research? Um, so definitely, I think the gap year, it gave me, um, it was the breaks on like, you know, just slow everything down a bit. And um, at sixth form, because I was also working there, but I'm sure regardless if I had been working there or not, um, I got a lot of support from the staff. So my my previous teachers, um, I feel like it was more catered towards the university goals, like, um, the staff knew a lot more about what how how what it takes to apply to un apply to uni and how to apply to uni. Um, my uh, tutor or mentor at sixth form was um, his, the current head teacher, um, and I I remember saying like I'm really like anxious because I don't know how to apply and I've and no one in my family knows how to apply. Um, there's no one that can like help me with my personal statement but I received a lot of support and a lot of like point was pointed in a lot of directions where I could get more uh, resources as well um so definitely I did it gave me the time to look up a lot of um further things so my mum suggested to me like you know you should look up for scholarships as well which I didn't even think about because I think once you're once you're fixated especially on something like medicine or a really like competitive degree you just think about getting in you don't like you don't really think outside of that but I'm fortunate that my mum actually suggested that to me so I started looking around at like um different scholarships um and if what was the criteria because I always assumed that you have to be incredibly high performing to get a scholarship and although there, there are scholarships like that um there's also scholarships now that are much more commonly available or accessible to people from backgrounds like mine and Halima's so people who've gone to schools that are um, doing the best that they can in the community but are generally not funded as much as they can be because um, you, you everybody like especially at this stage we're aware of the difference between someone who's gone to a private school and someone who's gone to a state school a public school and um the fact that they have scholarships to assist with if you perform well at a state school they acknowledge that you have 
made so much more effort than and you haven't had it sort of handed to you not that private schools have it handed to them I'm sure they work hard as well but it just kind of a, a more appreciative of the difficulty in the whole learning process so um it was really nice to see that a lot of the schools I was applying to had um scholarships and they were also very easy to apply to um there wasn't much extra information required it was everything that you'd put forward with your application so they wouldn't kind of make you write an essay of like why you should get a scholarship they kind of saw okay you got the grades this is your background um how can this help you so it was a very supportive entry into higher education that's really nice to hear as well and um widening participation scholarships and things were not necessarily something I was aware of in terms of transitioning to university and such. So I think it really does show that research pays off and almost knowing what you're stepping into. And I feel as though someone who's been through more of that journey than us as we're still undergraduates, um, Halima kind of almost as a bit of a preview and an insight into one of the um, careers that we could potentially have what was sort of like the steps that you had to take to become a pharmacist but also how you're keeping your knowledge up to date and finding that information out yeah so to become a qualified pharmacist you need a master's of pharmacy degree now that's four years to go through you then undertake a pre-registration placement for a year and you sit registration exams. Once that is complete, you are a qualified pharmacist and that's what I've done. And then um, because I'm working in a hospital, I've been enrolled in a clinical pharmacy diploma. Now that's two years and it to juggle and balance that with your day to day, um, you need um, some kind of organisation. And I think future, I would love to do an independent prescriber course and go into like a specialist route. I'm not sure yet what I would like to go to, but that is kind of the path I'm taking. Um, I did research uh, online. I found notes from university and obviously the hospital I'm working at and my regulatory body. So there's a lot of information out there. It's just researching into it. Almost like a case of knowing roughly what you're looking for, would you say? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I guess that is always, if you have like a general idea, that can be a really nice starting point. Um, and I was just, while you were talking about that and about the research and how it was really useful to look around, Lorraine, I remember you saying that you looked at multiple universities and then settled on Birmingham and you'd had an interview at UCL, et cetera, as well. Um, and I'm sure we all went through similar experiences in that sense where it wasn't just one uni that's where I'm going so what were some of the biggest influences of that research maybe kind of like open days or brochures or talks etc um so I did go to a few unis and I think I can never say like wholeheartedly like you know this is the uni for you because everybody will probably like everybody has their own preference but um the thing that drew me to Aston was the campus environment. So as soon as we came, I uh, came with my parents for open day, um, there were student ambassadors about, they were so friendly, so welcoming. Um, I saw the, the new student union was built and it's like a, a great area that um, I go to pray in. There's a prayer room. Um, there's a lot of social activities there. Um, there's like a space to relax and study as well. Um, and then at the time, the medical school hadn't actually, I think the corridor wasn't actually accessible. Um, so I don't remember seeing it, but the uni itself, it just like, it was enough. Um, we had a great talk from um, 
someone from at the uni that I still uh, work with a lot actually as a student ambassador um her name's Afshan and I still remember her talk it was amazing um it was like the idea that what instantly hit me was like there's two ethnic women who are giving a talk and they're they've come an incredible way like they are so intellectual and it's amazing like because I didn't really I wasn't seeing that a lot um in Luton and I guess it's it's not fair to compare the two because Birmingham's just so much bigger but um seeing that was like wow this is amazing um and then hearing them speak about what their plans are for the medical school I was like you know I can fully see myself investing in this um and then there was things like um the scholarship and widening participation and their emphasis on how important that was um the scholarship has helped me so much. Um, it's called the Sir Douglas Doug Ellis yeah, uh, Scholarship from Aston, and it's helped. It, it helped me kind of have a strong foothold in the beginning. Um, so that, like, it was all like it all made sense. Like it was like the perfect for me when I came to Aston. I saw it as the perfect environment with all the um, supportive things. Because what I was worried about is, oh, you know like maybe um maybe maybe it'll be too too much like on on my own like maybe I'd have to do too much work by myself at uni so it was nice that you know like you have other other people supporting you um the staff and in every way that they could amazing and I think it's so nice to hear a little bit more about one university but also kind of opening minds up to how that is actually accessible at all universities and then going back to what Halima said about the research aspects of things it all links in really nicely and I think it's never going to be too late to kind of research those options etc even if it is seeming like you're going to be going to uni really soon and I do kind of want to go into a little bit of an abstract question almost and um, and I'm going to go to Helena first. You know, if there's one bit of advice or something you could tell your past self, Helena, in this journey that you've been on, what would it be to kind of help you along the way if you were to do it again? So I think one of the things that I would like to do is learn how to revise better. I was in a situation where I was copying all my notes word for word and that was not efficient. In fact, it was taking so much time and of course not putting too much pressure on yourself and comparing yourself to others. I think that's very important as well. So those are the two things I would change. I think there's some really key bits of advice in there and learning about your revision style as well is something that someone still kind of in undergraduate and quite early on in my studies that's something that I'm going to borrow from you if that's all right so thank you for sharing that with us um and the of yourself kind of what would you advise your past self as it were so um there's something that's I feel like is really important and I don't I don't know if it's been touched on um like in these kind of things but um, there will be a lot of people that tell you that you can't do something. There was a lot of instances where um, like either teachers or just colleagues would be like, you know, this is so difficult. Like, how can you even be, like imagine doing something like this? Or there was people, there'd be people that misinform you. So I've had experiences where I've been misinformed by about results. And I've been told that, you know, only people with like a star, a star, a star can get into medicine. And I think if I had listened to those people, I would have never, you know, researched it myself, found all the ways that you can actually become um, a medical student in the UK without, you know, like, like look it, look it all up for myself. And I think that's so important. Just keep, make sure you do your own research and you stay, you stick to your guns, like you stick to your goals. Um, and kind of stay strong throughout it, th throughout it, because it is a journey. 
And I just, um, oh, go on. Can I just add to that? I just wanted to say, don't let target grades define you. That is probably the best advice anyone can have because I think both me and Lorraine, Pierre, we did better than what was predicted for us and it got us to positions where we are now. If we had stuck by with them, then we wouldn't be in this position we are now. Yeah, I was predicted like a D in my maths or C in maths and I got an A and the teacher was surprised. But it's like, you know, no one knows you as much as you do really lovely beautiful messages there to kind of end off this half and it's almost like I just want to give you more airtime almost the conversations have been really insightful and interesting to kind of learn more about different career paths etc today and I want to thank you both Halima and Rave for joining this half of the show we are now going to head for a short break but please stay tuned for the second half and we'll hear from our next two guests Minaz and Parahan. Welcome back to the second half of the show and what a fantastic first half we had speaking a bit more to Lareb and to Halima about their experiences in um, the STEM fields and how their careers in medicine and pharmacy respectively are progressing. In the second half of the show I'd love to welcome two more guests Manaz, who is an actuarial scientist, and Parahan, who is a graduate in chemistry. In this half, we'll be learning more about some of their roles, some of the niche aspects of the STEM field and their experiences, as well as some more advice, lessons that can be learned, and little bits of information that we kind of wish we knew or would definitely incorporate into our day-to-day -day lives moving forward and if we've known them before. I'd like to welcome our next guest to the show and let her introduce herself. Manaz, it's lovely to meet you. Hi, Aparisha. Hi, everyone. So I'm Manaz and I'll just give a little walkthrough about my journey in education so far. So I started off at high school at Denby High School. So if any one of you are there, I used to be a student there too. Um, and then after five years of Denby, um, I went along and went to Luton Sixth Form, did maths, bio, chemistry, uh, English. And then two years later, I decided to take a gap year. After that, Queen Mary, I spent a good three years um, doing maths with actuarial science there. So that's my journey so far. Lovely. I think you've got a really rich background in terms of things that a lot of us have kind of been through as well. And you mentioned that you studied maths with actuarial sciences, and that's incredibly niche. I don't think I've heard many people who've studied that before. So what does that kind of involve? And I guess also what inspired your choice to study it alongside maths at university rather than just on its own or just maths on its own? Oh my God, you know, the amount of people who say, oh, I've never heard of actuarial science before. What on earth is that? Well, <laughs> I say the same thing. It's to do with like the insurance industry and trying to analyze risk and trying to make sure that the insurance industry doesn't collapse, I guess. So um, that's what actuarial science is about. I think throughout my life, I've noticed that I've always been fact driven, data driven, like I want to know what is really the answer. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I chose maths. I loved maths and my love for it started um, doing GCSE. I liked finding solutions and I guess you get that bit of a high when you find the correct answer and you look at your teacher and be like, I did that, I got the right answer. So maths just, it turned into a love for me and sure I might not be the best one at it but I really liked the concepts that drives our world today and if you really think about it maths really is everywhere so um I'm, I, I was I was really happy that I chose that as my degree at the end because choosing a degree that you're really passionate about is something that should be front and center in your mind and 
your life, I guess. Um, I chose actuarial science, particularly because I think it was around before college, after high school. I don't know if anyone remembers, but after the end of every gambling um, ad, you'd see when the fun stop, stop. And that really spoke to me. Sure, I'm not a gambler. Or I don't know any people who uh, particularly had that kind of a buzz, but it really brought things into perspective because how can you stop yourself when you're on an impulse or how can you mitigate a risk when it's really hard to control? And I think that's what really inspired me and on top of that you'd hear celebrities talking about oh I got my arm insured I got my foot insured and whatnot and it was quite it was quite amusing to me because I didn't realize the insurance industry did those kind of things um I guess a little homework for everyone uh what kind of body part did Rihanna insure and how much is it so it would be quite interesting to see if anyone can find the answer to that so yeah actuarial science maths two beautiful subjects combined together at university I was really glad um, to spend the last couple of years really studying it and understanding it so yeah but honestly I think I've learned a lot there in terms of what actuarial science actually is and also that Rihanna has a part of her body insured very interesting <laughs> and I'm sure that I'm not alone in that fact and um, so many interesting things came up in that conversation, especially the bit about math being everywhere. I mean, I'm an engineer, so obviously my background is very heavily influenced by mathematics, but knowing that there's obviously the different streams of math, my kind of passion for engineering was more heightened by the mechanic side of A-level math. Those of you who study it will know it's broken down into several components of the pure, the mechanics, the, the statistics. Where in A-level maths did you, now looking back, kind of see glimpses of what you do in actuarial sciences? So maybe anyone who might be considering it can kind of get a little taster for where it might be in those foundational stages. Oh, wow. Ugh, back at college, statistics I did statistics um as um the extra modules that we could choose other than I think it was decisions right and mechanics so I chose statistics and if you guys are still studying it um there was loads of things to do with binomial hypothesis testing and when I did do my degree, I did see hints and elements of that into um, my probability and statistics modules at uni. So that definitely comes along. But then when you do decide to do a maths intensive uh, course, you'll realize that there's so many other models out there. It's not just the binomial model. It's not just um, if, an, if, if anyone does it, chi-squared models. There's so many things like Weibull, uh, Pareto, like there's so many models. And I, so there's so many types of models that you'll be interested in. It won't be just binomial model. It will be to do with multiple binomial model. It might be to do with chi-squared. It might be to do with Pareto and Weibull. Like these are models that I've never heard of and I've never experienced that in A level. And you kind of realize that, wow, there's so many kind of things that you could do outside of like A level that have restricted parameters and they all have something to give back. And when you do do a degree in whether it be maths or actuarial science or anything like that, I think you realize that maths is so diverse so different and it's still an evolving subject so I definitely recommend that if anyone's interested in maths go ahead take the plunge you might not be the best one but at least you'll be learning something different and something real I guess I think yes yeah, absolutely there's so much to take from that kind of messages and take from those messages that you've expressed there and interesting that you spoke about the binomial testing, the hypothesis testing, all of those things are vaguely, you know, in a memory to me, but not necessarily the aspects of maths that I brought forward into what I do. And it does 
really highlight the diversity of mathematics, which is really interesting. I think it really shows just how wide that world of maths really is. So now that you've kind of done a degree in actuarial sciences and are starting out with your career, what's the scope like? What sort of careers can you follow now that you have a degree that involves actuarial sciences? Mm. Well, I think one of the things that I took into consideration was that I didn't want to do an actuarial science degree purely. I wanted to do something of a mix because maths, I don't know if anyone knows, but it's kind of a declining subject. Like it's quite rare nowadays that there's math students who are like um, entering any kind of industry nowadays. And so it was quite, that was one of my leading decisions when I did decide to choose uh, maths with actual science. And the careers are boundless. Like you can join the finance industry, you can become a business analyst an insurance analyst. You can even become a consultant and specialize in actuarials um, risk and stuff like that. So it's very much, you're not restricted, I guess. And if you are thinking of joining asset management or um, any type of risk desk or tax desk kind of roles, doing a maths with actuarial science degree or an actuarial science degree is perfect. Lovely. Some really key advice there to our listeners and to maybe people who are thinking about exploring a bit more about actuarial sciences and I think the conversation we've had today has been such an enriching insight and I'm really glad we've been able to discuss this. I've got one kind of last little bit just to kind of dig into is a bit more advice for our listeners. What would you be saying the one bit of advice is that you would give to maybe your past self or someone who's in that position at high school, just finishing college, what would you have done differently potentially? Or what would you have done to enhance your position where you are now even further? Yeah, I think, you know, when you're a teenager, you're just so lost and you're just pushing through life. And I think it would be a great idea to just take some time and to like identify your key values and beliefs I see people today like post university like still being confused about what they believe in and what their belief system is so being confident in that area is like something that will ultimately be amazing to look into because it'll give you more of a direction um I'd also say that any experience work experience whether it be volunteering or simple as retail or anything like that something to build on my communication skills or your communication skills is something that I would have advised myself heavily had I gone had I gone back in time I guess so those are two key things I would also say don't stress out too much because if you stress out too much and at the end of the day if it if it affects your health I mean there's no much point of stressing about small things I think when I was back at college I used to stress out over the most darnest of things and it was it, now that I think about it, it's completely ridiculous but really learn to let things go and let life take you where it needs to take you don't stress out too much incredible thank you so much for your time today Minaj thank you Barisha I'd like to introduce our final guest of the show today. Alan, I'd like to introduce Parahan um, and I'll let her tell us a little bit about her journey through education and to where she is now. So, hi, I'm Parahan Tambe and I went to Luton Sixth Form College and I decided in my first year to study chemistry, physics, maths and history. Um, and then in my second year of Sixth Form, we all like it was advised to drop a subject and I chose to drop history and keep just the sciences because I thought that was something where something more likely I would do in the future in uni I wasn't quite sure yet but um, I thought I'd do a science at university. Fantastic and then kind of after sixth form etc where did you head off to next? Um, I went to Nottingham Trent University and I studied chemistry um, I did a bachelor's degree, a three-year degree, 
and yeah that was my education from sixth form to university lovely and i think it's really nice to see that you know it's the variety of where you've been able to travel where you've been able to study it yeah. after graduation kind of where did you go did you get a job oh yeah away? yeah so pretty soon after university I graduated in July and I started my first job in September um I got a job my first job was a graduate research and development scientist for an automotive refinish company so it was basically like a paint and coatings company for cars and other vehicles and stuff like that so um I thought coming out with a chemistry degree that naturally I would go into like research or something like that um so that was my first job out of university and I worked there for over a year like around a year and a half but um yeah I decided that working in a lab wasn't really for me so during like lockdown and the pandemic I started to apply for other jobs and then eventually I got this role at the British uh, sorry I won't say the name but um, I got the I've got this role at a trade association for coatings and manufacturers as a regulatory affairs executive so that's like different to working in a lab it's more um, reading and like checking through legislation and all the chemical regulations that go through so it's more the caution like safety health and safety around the chemicals rather than actually working with the chemicals directly that's really interesting and I think even for me even though I have a background in chemistry etc I wasn't really aware of the depth of role and the types of roles that you could go into and I think that kind of the journey you've been on to where you are now is really interesting and I really want to delve into some of the kind of maybe more notable decisions or journey paths that you've been on and starting almost with your sixth form journey and um, you mentioned that the sixth form advised you dropped a subject of your four and of that you chose history so of course the yeah. decision came about because of the recommendation of the college but how did that then empower your position to excel in your other subjects was it you had more time for them or um to be honest history was probably my favorite subject but because my other subjects were more like closely linked I decided to keep them together so it gave me more options with the university um, but to be honest now thinking about it it didn't really make too much difference I could have still studied chemistry and kept history and like dropped a subject I wasn't that into for example physics um, but six form just advised that, that for your own well-being three subjects at A levels is the best option it wasn't forced a lot of people still did for A levels um, when I was at six form but yeah, I just decided to drop history because I didn't think it would be as useful. But I do think like advice for anyone at university at uh, sixth form now, the best decision is to pick subjects you love the most and just go through with those. Um, it won't really too badly impact what you want to do unless you want to study something like medicine. I think that's some really key advice there. I'm glad you mentioned that. And I think in my sixth form journey, there was talk of four subjects for a while. Um, yeah. But making that decision, especially with the consideration of well-being and balancing it up between what you might need versus what you kind of are, achieve, uh, are able to achieve. Yeah. I, I think that's a really strong thing to have to look at and a big thing to make a decision about at such a young age. Um, and it's it really such a big decision. Actually. It's such a hard decision yeah. for people who are 17, 18 years old to have to decide what they want to do in the future. Yeah. But I would just say, just pick what you love doing. And honestly, it won't really make too much difference. Yeah. And I've got to say, admirable to make that choice, weighing up kind of more what you like against what you think you might need and bearing in mind how to group the subjects together. And I know based on my experience at sixth form, I don't know if you have the same, but the access to resources, the access to people to have those conversations with really helped make that decision. Yeah, having close people who have been through it, who have the best advice for you really does help. Um, I think having people who have done it recently really helps too. So you remember a lot closer. I think people in their first year of uni will probably give the best advice to people who are just picking their A-levels now because they've been through it not too long ago. Um, you slowly start to forget when you've kind of been through the process and you start working. 
but yeah having a good network around you of people to give you advice is really important absolutely and I know that there's so many ways to get in touch with people like that as well so again some fantastic advice and um, so after sixth form etc it came to the decision for yourself about a course for university and you mentioned that you weren't quite sure initially so what helped yeah. you make your decision to study chemistry in the end um I had no idea what I wanted to do for a job or even really what I wanted to study and I don't want to pick something too specific because it would leave me with less options of what I could be later um so I decided to study chemistry it was my favorite subject out of the three that I'd done and I assumed that I'd be able to go into like a variety of different roles post uni so yeah that's why I picked chemistry and hearing about kind of your career journey from kind of the research scientist to the regulations work that you do now I think yeah. it's very obvious that actually it could have been a really nice fit in the sense that there are lots of options out there for someone with a chemistry degree would I be right to kind of say something like that yeah chemistry has lots of options there's like actual chemistry jobs that you can do but there's also a lot of options outside of it so you can for example a lot of people have done a, another degree where they have done a law conversion post not just chemistry but other scientific um, courses or have even gone to working in technology based on a chemistry degree. It's quite broad and it shows they have an yeah. analytical mind. And um, yes, a lot of jobs are willing to hire people with chemistry degrees, even if the role isn't chemical based. I see so many parallels with what you've just said there with engineering roles as well. And I think generally with a STEM degree, one of the greatest things is just how many doors it opens. It's almost like, the degree title is just the start of a story. It's nowhere near the end. Yeah, definitely. Engineering opens so many options. You have such a variety of either technical roles or accounting roles, financial roles, just anything um, analytical based. So it's just mostly about my mindset. If you are able to analyze things properly, people like that you've done these degrees that are generally quite difficult and they show that you're actually quite good at problem solving and you're able to take on a variety of roles and logically think through and yeah so it shows that you're adaptable I think absolutely and I guess that adaptability may have been something that you saw a lot as a research and development scientist so when you were working in the lab what were some of your day-to-day -day responsibilities to complete the work um there was a lot of variety of different roles that I didn't expect um in a R&D role so a lot of it is just planning your own day and so for example I was designing paint for cars so most of my day was just based around what I thought I needed to do on that day like some of it was on a computer basically just testing out different formulations um, mathematically to see if the numbers added up for different chemical reactions and stuff and then going into the lab and just testing out whatever I thought I needed to do whichever so I'd make a I'd for example go down get all the um, reagents I needed make a paint and then test it out do whatever tests I felt that were needed for example for cars you need to test things like water solubility it can't be a paint that just dissolves very easily it needs to be hard but it also needs to be flexible so it was just whatever tests I thought were necessary it was a lot of going online researching different testing and different ways of I guess testing the limits of a coating or a pain and just doing whatever I felt was important and backing it with data so it was a lot of planning your own day and just yeah it was very free sounds really independent and somewhat self-fulfilling you know you kind of see it actually have made a breakthrough with something or something's become a bit of a challenge and being able to direct your own research how was that as an experience it was interesting. It wasn't personally for me. Um, I didn't enjoy being in a lab because it was a lot of physical work and it was very exhausting and traveling to work every day and also having to like do a lot of manual labor and like going into a spray booth, like we'll spend most of your day in a spray booth spraying different panels and stuff like that. And then having to like whack them or do whatever I needed to do to test them or 
just yeah it was very tiring and I think I preferred reading a lot more and a lot more like so I prefer the part where I was on the computer just analyzing the different chemical components put together and stuff like that nice and I was going to say I think that was really reflected in the current role that you're in so making that change (laughs) is something that's really suited you which is great I do just want to ask one little thing and I think it's something that I've asked a lot of our guests today because it's such an insight uh, for someone who's had the experience so looking back what would you advise your past self when it comes to these choices etc um just honestly just pick what you love don't put pressure on yourself to do subjects based on what you think you're going to want in the future or what you think the outcome is going to be you just have to pick subjects that you love now um you'll do the best in the subjects you want to you enjoy so yeah don't try and put too much pressure on what you think is going to work well together or anything just pick what you you'll do the best in subjects you love and honestly going to a good university getting a good good grade is more important than specifically doing a subject because you think it's what you're meant to be doing fantastic I think there's so many great things to take forward not just from the conversation with yourself but also throughout the rest of the show today so being able to speak with Lorraine about her medicine degree um Halima about her work in pharmaceuticals and then Manaz about the actuarial sciences I know that I've definitely learned a lot and of course from yourself with your background with chemistry and moving through multiple different roles so for today we've come to the end of the feature show and I would really like to extend my thank you to all four of the guests that have come on to the show I've really enjoyed getting to talk to everyone about their experiences and hope that it's given you as our listeners some of an insight into what opportunities are out there for you. Thank you for tuning in and for listening to today's show. And we'll be back again soon with some more guests to discuss and to discover some more opportunities about the opportunities of careers in STEM.